sometimes you want to add a little bit of functionality to a function that already exists. An example that I like to give is you want to time how long a function takes. It's still the same function, you just need to decorate it with a little bit extra functionality. And Python gives you a handy way to decorate functions with extra stuff like this using something called a decorator, which looks like this. This is the syntax for me applying a timer decorator to my function. And I'll get into that in a second. The key thing to take away from this video is that when you see something like this, it means that Python is wrapping some extra code around the function. And now when you call that function, it's gonna behave a little differently because it's been decorated. I say it wraps extra functionality around the function because decorators can put some code before the code inside the function and they could put some code after the code in the function, wrapping around it. In the case of the timing decorator, it would need to start the clock before the function which it decorates and stop the clock and calculate the time elapsed after the function which it decorates. Another interesting use case of decorators is that they can be used to run code on certain events. A useful one is the register decorator from at exit. It runs the code when a file terminates. So there, I didn't actually call this function anywhere in my file, but the register decorator has added some extra functionality such that this function is gonna be called whenever the file terminates, whenever I reach the end. The most common use case of decorators is in decorating methods of classes. The static method decorator allows you to define methods which don't take in the instance of the class self as the first parameter generally because they're independent of whichever instance they're attached to. And the other really common one is the class method decorator. And what that does is it allows you to define functions which take in not the instance of the class as the first parameter, where you usually have self, but the class itself. So when you call this from string method, what's passed in as the first argument behind the scenes by Python by default is this class is the date class. It's not an instance of that class. And both of those methods can be called directly as methods of the class rather than as of methods of an instance of the class. But I won't get into the detail of static methods and class methods right here. You will find decorators in other places too. And it's great that you are watching this because in my experience, many developers actually don't know what a decorator is when they first encounter one. So when you see an at sign in your Python code, you'll know what it is. To make sure you leave understanding the minimum you need to know about how decorators work, I'll take a few minutes to quickly go through the process of implementing the timing decorator, which I discussed. And how would I go about timing it if I had no idea about decorators? I'd firstly probably create a function that calls my function inside. And then I could call that function. Now it only works for that one function. So what if I've got another function which I want to time as well? I don't have to copy all of this just to replace this line. So what I could do is pass that function in as an argument. Now my timer takes in a function, it runs that function, and I can do that for the two functions which I've defined. Now this function times whatever function I pass into it. I personally think that this looks a little confusing because it's calling a function, but it doesn't really look like it is just from the outside line. But the bigger problem is now I can't pass arguments to the functions inside. So for example, if both these functions took in an index, and then I try to run it, it's gonna say that they're both missing a positional argument index. And that's because when I've called these functions, I haven't passed in anything there. And if I were to write an index in there, 
well, they would have to be the same for the two different functions every time I use this timer, which might not be the case. So I could pass on an argument here. So I could even use some fancy Python syntax to make this timer work for functions which have different number of arguments. But now this is just getting uglier and uglier and harder to read. It's not clear that on this line, I'm essentially calling this function with this argument. And this is still a very simple example. What would be much nicer is if I could just get a new function which has that timer wrapped around it. And so a step towards that is to get this timer function to return a new function, which is the original function that I wanted to decorate wrapped with that extra functionality like this. So the timer is a function which takes in a function and returns a new function which has that timer functionality wrapped around it. And in that case, the arguments which need to be passed to the function I want to time need to be passed in to the wrapper. Because this is the one which is returned and then is going to have the arguments passed in like that. We're getting close to decorators now. And this is what defining a decorator looks like. But Python provides what's known as the pi syntax to do this more compactly. That's the at sign notation which you saw me use earlier. And it works like this. Instead of needing this line where I'm defining a function and then creating a new function from it, I can instead just decorate each of these functions with the pi followed by the name of my decorator. And that means I've got to put my decorator at the top of the file. And now I don't need this. Now this doesn't exist. Instead, what's happened is what this syntax does is it essentially calls this function on the function that's defined on the line below. And then it overwrites that function with the wrapper that's returned. So now when I call my function, that function's been redefined so that it includes the timer. It's been decorated by the timer decorator. It can be confusing because there's all these functions going in and out, but here are the key things to remember. Decorators wrap functions with extra functionality. You can define your own decorator by defining a function. That decorator must take in a function as an argument and return a function too. You can define however you want it to decorate your original function. That's totally up to you. And then when you put the pi syntax on the line above a function definition, the function with that name is overwritten by the wrapped version of the function that's returned from the decorator. It can get a little bit fiddly when the function you want to decorate takes in arguments. You just need to remember to put them in the right place. So the arguments need to be defined as parameters of the wrapper function in your decorator. And a really common mistake is trying to define them in the decorator arguments, not in the wrapper. But the decorator only takes in one thing. And that is the function which you want to decorate. These can get a lot more complicated. You can look into training multiple decorators together, or you can even go on to write classes which can be used as decorators. But if you understand that, then you're really solid.